The Five Fingers Method Putting an end to burning out in life Let's start with some lyrics. The number of your days has been counted, by the way, mine too. If you're reading this article on a psychological portal, you've already lived a third of your life. Maybe even half. Or even two-thirds. And like the vast majority of people in the world, you actively burn through your life. Let me explain. From an individual standpoint, a person can live their life in one of four states. Option number one. Always in unconscious behavior. Not thinking about the future, not making plans, not analyzing their behavior, not trying to change anything. The effectiveness of such a life tends toward zero. However, internal tension heads in the same direction smiley face option number two. Striving for an unconscious life. The consciousness is strong enough to pick up on personal problems and difficulties. But the individual strives to forget about them, not think, repress them. To avoid overheating. As a result, effectiveness is close to zero, but internal tension sharply increases. If we use the metaphor of a traffic light, this way of life can be boldly highlighted in red and called a complete burnout. It includes laziness, inaction, automatic behavior, illnesses, suffering, stagnation, living for others and by others' rules and beliefs. What do all these behavior options have in common? Low effectiveness and a high degree of fatigue from life. Option number three. Total control. A person controls everything. Themselves, circumstances, other people, the past, present, and future. Well, tries to control. Naturally, with this approach, effectiveness is quite high and it's limited only by internal fatigue, which tends to maximize. If we use the metaphor of a traffic light, this way of life can be highlighted in yellow and called moderate burnout. It includes situations where you overexert yourself, chronically tire yourself, rush around, constantly struggle with something, and simply fall into the trap of hypercontrol. This is also where all your life gestalts, obsessions, and conflicts fall into place. What do all these behavior options have in common? Sufficient effectiveness but a high degree of fatigue from life. Option number four. Striving for a conscious life. Here, the goal is not to take into account all possible difficulties, problems, facts, and circumstances. Here, the task is to consciously begin a task. Motivate yourself. Achieve results. As an example, I will provide the five fingers methodology. It makes sense to use this methodology at the beginning of a task, during various obstacles, and upon completing your tasks. The goal is to motivate yourself, maintain energy, and boost your mood. I experience pleasure. Tell yourself this every time you start any non-serious task. Whether it's watching YouTube, TV, or reading newspapers. Taking a shower, sunbathing, or having breakfast, going for a walk, having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, or inhaling the scent of flowers. In other words, during any everyday enjoyment. I want to draw your attention, it's important to actually talk to yourself about it. But it will be even more effective if you engage your muscle memory. And every time you initiate the process of enjoyment, use this well-known gesture, I create. Tell yourself this every time you start any creative work. It's worth clarifying that creative work is any work aimed at producing a unique result, although the scale of this work is not important. I create order. For example, when you clean, stick to your plans, or engage in raising a child. I create results. When you balance your debits and credits, draw a bridge plan, or search for suppliers. I create success when you overcome any difficulty on your path. I create opportunities. When through your current behavior, you lay the foundation for future success. I create relationships. When you negotiate, consult someone, or get to know someone. Muscle memory is conveniently activated through this gesture, I make decisions. Tell yourself this every time you set goals, choose between two options, consider taking a risk, or take responsibility. 
Let your memory remember these moments because they have the potential to greatly contribute to the growth of your self-esteem, reduce anxiety, and help you establish boundaries with others. As for muscle memory, the gesture associated with this category of activities is not an endorsement of profanity. It is a reminder that the middle finger is also the longest finger. In other words, it serves as a reminder that decisions in our lives are the most significant events. Well, it also reminds us that sometimes, to make decisions, we need to tell everyone to, well, you know. I am in the flow. Tell yourself this every time you are tempted to fall into the arms of monotony and routine. Every time you need to maintain high activity and alertness during long tasks. Every time the process of moving towards your goal is more important than the final result. Or simply when you want to feel alive. Activate muscle memory with the ring finger. Let it be the most nameless finger. But it's the finger where we wear wedding rings so that we can live in the flow together with our loved ones for a long time. I develop myself. Tell yourself this every time you learn something, gain knowledge, and improve yourself. Because without this aspect of your life, all the other aspects will not help you avoid the feeling of degradation. As for sign language, let the pinky finger be associated with this action. After all, it's also a finger. Let it remind you that you always have room to grow smiley face. Once again, you need all the fingers. If you rely on just one finger, your life will become one-sided very quickly. Value life in all its manifestations. Live. Have a great mood.